One and ACC Network Extra. Today inside the Joel Coliseum, the second meeting of the regular season between the Duke Blue Devils and the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. Of course, you clicked on it, so you knew the matchup already. Perhaps you didn't know that Stan Luter would be here. Stan and Evan, great to be with you on this Sunday afternoon again. One week left in women's basketball regular season tournament beckoning shortly. These are two teams that both had high expectations and both have just been diminished by injuries all season long. Yeah, I mean, it, it's crazy breaks. You know, injured ankles, injured knees, sickness, you name it. Both of these squads have had to endure it. So with a week left in the season, what you're trying to do is get some confidence, get some momentum as you go into the tournament because we all know anything can happen to the tournament. So this is a very important game for both teams. Players from both teams forced to take on new roles this year. Haley Gorecki in a do-everything type role for Duke. Yeah, she's she's led this team in scoring 20 times. She's a phenomenal athlete. She can score inside, as you see there on the cut. She can make three-point baskets. She's had 22 games where she's made a three. And so what she does is she's a very hard person to defend. One thing I like about her, she's got a quick release. She's a very, very solid defensive player can steal, take at the end of the floor, and finish the basket. So you got to keep your eye on Haley. And then you got Alex Sharp, Evan, and, and it's just good to see her back on the floor. In her last two basketball games, she scored in double figures. You know, and she may be the person to kind of help galvanize this team as we go through the final weeks of the season. She's a solid leader. She rebounds, she runs, she can defend. She's got a little bit of everything. And the thing I like about it, she's got some experience, so she can make that little baseline jumper and give Wake some more offense. Alex Sharp missed the first matchup against Duke, but this is matchup number two of the season. And for a little perspective on that, our sideline reporter Haley Brooke McFadden, an ACC athlete herself. What's it like to face a team for the second time, Haley Brooke? Thanks guys. When I played in college, I always looked really forward to playing a team twice because especially if you lost to him, you got to come back and prove yourself. And I think Jen Hoover is looking forward to for the group today. They have Alex Sharp back who has been a huge force for them. And Coach McCauley said that that's what they're really focusing on. Even though they're familiar with Wake, they want to be physical like Sharp is and be physical without, be physical without fouling and match her physicality to be successful. Guys? The 85th meeting all time between Duke and Wake Forest in women's basketball. This series has been owned by the Blue Devils in the past couple decades. Duke 49 and one in their last 50 meetings, but Wake did win on Valentine's Day a few years ago. One thing you'll notice about Duke and Wake Forest, they'll play in a lot more zone, especially for Duke. One of the people to keep your eye on is Leona Oda, number five. She's a versatile player, very long, and will play at the top of that little one, two, two, or two, three zone set. She was Duke's best player in the 14 point win over the Deeks back in January. One month ago today, a matter of fact, as Alex Sharp grabs her first rebound on the miss from Gorecki. Getting off to a good start, very important for both of these teams. Wake Forest averages about 57 points a ball game. Duke. 64 points a game, so value in the ball, important second turnover by the Deeks. And two trips and two turns. Ratza and Hanna guilty of turnovers early as the Blue Devils feed it inside. Jade Williams working on Maya Banks, scoops it up, no. But it's Aname Akinbadi James, the Talented freshman from Nigeria who secures the rebound and then stepped out of bounds. Akambadi James has had 17 starts and is beginning to, to, to play a little better, understanding the speed of the basketball game. It's 6-3, a freshman, very raw. And the thing that we may say a lot in this ball game, young, raw, talent, potential, upside. All of these, both of these teams have the same chemistry. Alex Sharp's baseline jumper rims out. Sharp, her third game back after missing 10 ball games. Of course, she missed five the start of the year as well. Gorecki on the drive creates contact, and we'll get to the line. Gina Connie picks up her first foul. Wake Forest with only three players dressed. Not quite sure it was a game time decision if Ana Uda would play or not. So you, you ill afford to pick up cheap fouls. There's a good look at Anna. Look at all the injury. Reagan Branch injured her ankle in practice just the other day. You know, we know that um, and that's, uh, Ratza has been in rehabbing that knee injury, so we're not sure she's going to be back. And Ariel Stevenson has missed the entire season. A pinna, I said. What did I say? Ratza. said Ratza. Ratza. I don't want to wish her any bad luck. <laughs> My bad. Haley Gorecki trying to become the first Blue Devil 
ever to lead her team in points, rebounds, and assists. 17 and a half points, seven rebounds, and about four assists per game. Couple free throws there. 2-2-1 two, two, after the made free throw, and you got Odom at the top of the 2-3. They'll drop back into a 1-2-2, two, two, maybe some zone action, a 2-3. Got to be able to recognize that. Oh, accidental offense there, but missed layup for Sharp. Gets it back. She's 0 for 2 on the trip, 0 for 3 in the game. And he had a perfectly mid-range jump shot, passed it up. You got to be willing to take a shot. Williams on the block. I'm going to say it was partially blocked by Banks. So all season long, these have been two teams adapting to just... You, you lose one player and everybody gets bumped up a peg, so everybody's trying to do something different, a little bit out of their comfort zone, and that has led to the growing pains of the 3-10 and 1-12 and and conference records, respectively. Now 4 nothing Blue Devils as Akinbadi James scores her first basket inside. Strong inside rebound, kind of got Maya off balance and powered up for the basket. They're very long. Akinbadi James goes 6'3", Gut Chow goes 5'10", Ricky's about 6'6", six 6'1", six can push the ball. These two teams were warming up today, Stan. You had nine bodies out there for Duke and eight for Wake. Step back jumper, Odom, no good. And then the referees brought him to the captains to the middle, and Wake had two captains, and Duke had four, which left very few bodies actually <laughs> warming up for the game. Well, you don't have a lot of balls in warm-ups. You have to shoot. That's one thing. And it makes travel a little easier. But, yeah, these, both of these teams have had injuries, as we said in the open, and sickness. And, and what I like about them, they're young and they're battle-tested, and, and both will be better next season. Good help side defense by Conti. We'll stay with Duke. Three and a quarter gone here in the opening quarter. And Lindsey Jarosinski checks in. There's Joanne P. McCauley. Became the head coach at Duke in April of 2007. Recorded her 300th win against Ball State back in November. The quickest coach in ACC history to reach 300 wins at an ACC school. Williams stays with it and puts it in. 6 nothing Blue Devils. And going inside and being able to struggle and bang and bang and then make the play. Good job by Williams and Duke struggling, but off to a nice start at six up. You talked about the importance of a good start, especially for Wake Forest, who was outscored 27 to seven in the first quarter on Thursday night against the Wolf Pack. And an ugly start it has been through four minutes. Eight nothing Duke, timeout Deeks. Wake Forest is 0 for five with three turnovers in not even four minutes of play. Blue Devils pitching a shutout so far. Four different players have scored for Duke, and it's 8 zip. One month ago today, as a matter of fact, on January 24th, the Deeks traveled down I-40 to Durham. Ivana Ratza had 14 points in 36 minutes, but it was the Blue Devils who shot 54% from the field, they were 26 of 48. They made eight of 18 threes, and they won the game 66 to 52. That was their 67th win all time against Wake. It's funny because in the all-time series between Duke and Wake, the first 34 meetings were neck and neck. Duke had an 18-16 lead. The last 50 meetings, Blue Devils have won 49 of them. You know, that became the the era in the mid-2000s where Duke was just one of the most dominant forces in not only the ACC but the NCAA basketball final four appearances and continued All-Americans on a beard to one of the people you always think about Lindsey Harding just to name it too so um, it's, it's been funny it's been a great great run early now Wake Forest got to find a way to kind of get this series back even again you're not used to seeing the Blue Devils at 3 no, and 10 you're not <laughs> but, you know, they, they lost Lexi Brown, who was a, a great all-time player, really special kid. No question kid. about it. And then you have three point guards go down during the season after you lose her. Yeah. And 
the Blue Devils have basically been treading water ever since. Lambert was hurt in that Hampton game in the NCAAs two years ago. Right. He's never really recovered from that knee injury. And Boykin, young lady from down at Clinton, who was the North Carolina Player of the Year and, and really had high hopes for her, was injured last year and then he had a, was having a nice sophomore year and then was injured again back in January. So, yeah, they've had injuries. Duke's had injuries. And yet you have to continue to find a way to fight on and keep playing. Liana Odom airmails one. Wait for his ball. Yeah, you, you've had the timeout. You've had the poor start. And a lot of these problems that Wake Forest has had, 0 for 5 shooting, the three turnovers, are self-inflicted wounds. So now you've got to figure out a way. Okay, 0-0, you say to yourself, and let's go out and play. And again, the, the pressure right now that Duke is putting on, it's just token pressure, but it's big, is slowing Wake Forest momentum. See, they're hesitant right now in the offense. You've got to figure out what you want to do and try to get a basket. Good news to see Kaylin Dixon back out there. Oh, She's missed real good news, the last right? couple games with a concussion. She hits her first shot today. Yeah, it came up very confident. You see the second pass after you recognize the trap, her 17 three-point basket, and it would be good to see her kind of come in and give them some offense. Quick answer, though. Jade Williams explodes past Jarosinski. Talking to a lot of the coaches and people around Duke, they're really excited about the development of Jade Williams at 6'5", can run the floor, very athletic, solid player inside. It's getting better. From the other side, Dixon off the iron. Alex Sharp. That's her game on the offensive glass. Conti to Ratza. She was blocked by Williams. And Duke cannot believe that this is going to stay Wake Forest. Paul. We just talked about it. Williams on one side and comes back on the weak side. Help. You got a possible layup there. Williams comes out with the long arms, gets the block. Ball deflected off Duke. Wake yeah. Forest ball. Off Duke, according to the officials. Yes. The video may suggest oh, otherwise. Yeah, sometimes you can't believe what your eyes see. I was on Faith Suggs. In a sharp it goes. There's Conti from the corner. And did she get an assist for that stand? Jerzycki yes, puts it in. Give her an assist. It's a pass all the way. See if the friendly hometown score obliges. <laughs> So, so far, the official stats have it marked off as a missed three and Jarosinski with the offensive rebound. Good for Jarosinski to go up strong, take some contact and score. Dangerous cross-court pass there. Lots of deflects it out of bounds. There's Jen Hoover. Two wins away from her 100th victory. Averaging just under 15 wins a year in her first six seasons at the helm of the Dima Deacons. Garrett Skinsky, nice, nice pass inside for Ratza. All season long, one thing's been consistent offensively. Wake Forest has done a really nice job in respect of who's been in the post with the high-low situations. Nice pass that time, recognition to finish. After trailing 8 nothing, Wake's right back in it. Into the high post, basically the same play that Wake Forest just ran successfully. Well, versus zone, if you can get the ball about mid-range, top of the key area, good things can possibly happen. And you just look for the, the size advantage or the mismatch of the ball reversal. Quick six points for Williams. Three of six shooting, and Wake turns it over for the fourth time. Four different players with one turnover apiece so far for the Deeks including Conti, who played a turnover-free 37 minutes on Thursday in Raleigh, her first turnover-free game of the season. She plays a lot of minutes, handles the ball a lot, number two in assist in the ACC. And that's, that was a pleasing thing to see in a very tough afternoon. Three ball good for Mila Goodchild. And now all uh, five different Blue Devils have scored. That's the 62nd three of the season for Goodchild. Now 10 shy of tying Rebecca Greenwell's all-time Duke record. We talked about freshman. earlier about the fact that Ricky, Ricky has a really quick release on her jump shot. So does Goodchild, and it doesn't take her long to get her feet set. She's almost in one motion when given the time. And, and, and you like that ability. Duke, ha Duke has some weapons, but they've got to be able to pace. The pace of play has got to be very important for them. 
Williams from the outside now. And the foul on Duke. That was Jade Williams' second three-point attempt of the season. And she's no longer perfect. She had been one for one. Well, versus the zone, there are going to be some gap areas. And if you're a big, sometimes you're going to be forced to step outside and maybe take what appears to be a, a good jump shot. And the shot was on range. It just didn't go. They called the foul on the rebound action on Akinbadi James, her first. And there's another... Aaron pass for Wake. Gina Kane with a quick break on the bench. Now she's back in. And that was a very quick breather for Connie, who still looks like she's <laughs> breathing hard. Averaging 36 minutes a game, second in the ACC. Wake back to man. Duke recognizes, try to do a high low with Odom. Good shot, Liana Odom, the sixth Blue Devil to score. Odom 6 has got range, playing multiple positions right now, playing the point a lot. First 10-point lead for the Blue Devils. Trying to snap a three-game losing streak. Ratza shoots it over the taller defender. Pretty good defense from Akinbadi James. Rebound deflected out of bounds. Last touch by Duke. When you're doing having a lot of high-low, you have to be very, very careful with where you post up. And that was a situation where Rotso was below the block. And so when she turns into the big, she really had no place to shoot the basketball. And so if you, if you can just kind of get above the block, that gives you some room and an angle. And also, you got to understand where the defensive player was. Good job defensively. And, and nice job by Rotso to get the ball up. The other dynamic there is Rotso's a versatile player, yeah. but a more perimeter-oriented player. But I like the fact that because of her athleticism, she, you can post her up from time to time. Dixon from the baseline, no. Rebound out of bounds. Last touch by Gorecki. By Goodchild, rather. And now Gorecki's coming back into the game to give Odom a breather. Final minute here of the opening quarter. Banks. And finally the rebound controlled by Akinbadi James. A 17 second differential here between the game and shot clock. Deeks sparring an offensive rebound. Should see it again. Gorecki to the basket. Missed the lefty runner and a strong rebound for Dixon. And now Wake, if they so choose, can take the final shot. They need an excitement play, an explosion play. Just run this thing down, start your offense about seven, eight seconds, and get you a basket. Versus that 2-3 two, zone, 1-2-2, one, two, two, with the point right now where it is. Down to three seconds. Jarosinski takes the three and buries it. Her first career <laughs> three-point field goal attempt is a swish at the buzzer against the two Blue Devils. Wow. If not for that big, Duke would have closed the quarter on a 7-0 run, but meet your new three-point threat, Lindsey Jarosinski from deep. One down and three to go here at the Joel Coliseum. Blue Devils in front 17-10 as we check in with Haley Brooke McFadden about Wake's injury situation. Haley? Thanks, guys. You might have noticed there's some extra injuries today on the court for Wake Forest, including Odo, Branch, Stevenson, and Penna. But Penna's the only player who won't be returning to the team next year because she's a senior who played in too many games at the beginning of the season to redshirt. So she plans on playing with the Italian national team in May when she graduates and competing for a world championship at the end of June. After that, she hopes to play professionally. Back to you guys. Yeah, thanks, Haley Brooke. Penn has certainly been a huge loss for this Wake Forest team. Leading scorer, 15 points per game this year at a great junior season a year ago. And uh, she's going to finish her career more than likely just under 1,300 points. Wake's still hopeful they can get her back on the floor this year. That's a travel. Forgot to dribble. Akinbadi James called for the turnover. That's the first for the Blue Devils who played turnover free in the first 10 minutes, Dan. 
First turnover, six for Wake Forest. Wake Forest, four of 16 shooting from the field. Duke, seven of 17. But Wake Forest, as they've done all season long, consistently out-rebounding the, De the Devils, 13 to nine. Wake had a rebounding edge in the first meeting between these two teams by one. Inside, Ratza showing that she can be a post threat. Back to back baskets to big three at the end of the, the quarter. Then you go inside, you make a couple of head and shoulder fakes, and just extend in power. Good basket. The runner deflected. Good defense by Banks. Maya Banks continues to, to show improvement. Defensive awareness, being able to score in the post. Good pass to the corner and Sharps three off the iron. Foul on Wake, it's on Banks. Rebound action. Stan, I got a question for you. I only have to give you an answer. Do you think Lindsey Jarosinski will attempt another three before the end of the game today? Time and score. Everything, everything depends on time and score. I mean, the <laughs> first, not shot, run. first shot looks so good. Yeah, but that's, you know, you know, uh, Broke clock is right twice a day, too, okay? You know, they're, they're not going to run a play for it. Let's put it like this. I don't think they're going to run a play for it, but if it's in the offense, hey, you never know. How about that? <laughs> you know, just because, if, if you, I, took, if just I, because I, you took the shot, Evan, doesn't mean you need to take another. But I'm I, glad for it, though. If I were the coach, I'd run a play for it. Get so her what? an open look from the top of the key. Yeah, well, you needed Why not? that. You needed that shot. Diamond score. You needed the basket. Garecki chance for a three-point play. That's her first field goal after an 0-for-5 start. She gets a basket there. You don't want to get her fired up right now offensively. And, and if you wait for us, you found a way to work yourself back in the game. But this is why you're so afraid of Gorecki because you know she can take the long-range jumper, but then the little hesitation and the drive, and you get sharp on your heel, and you boom, you just blow by, and you get the foul in three-point play. Ella Grecki had the eighth triple-double in Duke women's basketball history earlier in ACC play against Pittsburgh. 16 points, 10 rebounds, 10 assists. She's a player that really fills up the stat sheet. Five points so far today, and the Duke lead back out to eight. Ratza gets it away from the traffic, and three-second violation is the call. You had the explosion play at the end of the quarter. You score the first possession. You, you, you cut into the 10-point lead. Now you've got to settle in and get your offense and play better defense. And if you do, just continue to work inside, outside. They're going to get an offensive foul the time on James. Oname Akinbadi James, who played a couple of years at Blair Academy in New Jersey, started playing basketball about four years ago. It's her second foul, though, and she heads to the bench, replaced by Jade Williams. And she's a raw talent. She is a new player to basketball. Playing so well lately, too. Another season. The, the good thing about some of the players being out with injuries and whatnot is that some of the younger players have maybe had to develop and learn a little bit sooner than they would have normally an unforced turnover there. So the Blue Devils after zero turnovers in the first 10 minutes, have given it away three times so far in the second quarter. Coach P won't be thrilled about that. She's a three-time ACC Coach of the Year. Won four consecutive ACC regular season championships, 2010, 2013. size of Duke makes Wake Forest have to start their offense around the three-point area and very hesitant to make passes. Make some shot fakes and drive fakes and you can get a basket on them. Good rebound. Conley got a pretty good look at the rebound as you said from Williams. Odom on the attack. Unable to crawl it over the rim and Jarosinski continues to fill up the stat sheet. Her second rebound. Nice Sharps pass. to the basket for two. Excellent way to run the break. Get the defender to, to, to commit to one side or the other and kick opposite. And a running Alex Sharp finishes the play. Deeks back within six. Two points, three rebounds for Sharp. Odom 
Tried to feed it to Williams, but well anticipated by Hanna. Ellen Hanna, the freshman from Stockholm, Sweden. Ratza catches at the elbow. Jarosinski inside. She's tied up. The arrow belongs to Wake Forest with 16 in the shot clock. Kaylin Dixon back in for Wake. Jada Adams returns for Duke. Jarosinski passes out of the double team. I feel like Duke playing with six defenders out there right yeah, now. Yeah, well, they're, they're, they're tall. They're tall and they're long, and those long arms make you kick the ball further away from the basket than you need to. You've got to make some fakes and, and, and try to penetrate. I think that foul. You got it on Goodchild. It's on Goodchild. That's her second, isn't it? First, you're going to write that down. They got it just with one, just one. at the moment. Okay. Face up, kick away. Ratza traveled. Thought they were going to call it three seconds <laughs> before, the, before the travel. But you saw an example of the length again of Dukes defensively, but then you can see there's gaps here. You've got to be ready to shoot the basketball, especially when the ball is rotated. Derecki finds herself open. Gorecki's next three-pointer will be her 50th make of the season, but she's not shooting a great percentage. Just under 30% for the year. Her last six ball games, I think she's in like 16 to 42 from three-point land. But again, you know she's explosive seven games. She's had double-doubles this year and, and 10 with 20 points or better. So if she's missing, if you're a Wake fan, you want to keep her missing. And if you're pulling for the team in blue, you want to get her warmed up as quick as possible. Bounce pass it. Ten to shoot. Great defense again by Duke. Connie's pass sails over oh, Alex Sharp. Wake Forest's ninth turnover. And we get ourselves a timeout midway through the second. Blue Devils lead by six. Hey, Evan, I got a great idea. Let's go inside the play just for you and J.O. Here's what you do. You go high to low, nice little high-low pass. Get separation. Swing the ball to the top. Look inside low. Get your hands ready. Get the ball score. Rots the score. She thinks for the pass. If Duke said anything Wake can do, we can do better. So Sug goes high. She looks low. There's a flashing post person. Goes inside, and you score to Williams. High-low basketball. Get post to post. You can get wing to post. You can get wing to wing. You can get guard to guard. High-low. Go inside, go outside, and score the basket. We went inside to play, and it felt so good. It just felt good. It didn't feel good to you. I wish the Guinness Book of World Records crew was here because that was an amazing deliberation of words with, with no breath to, to catch your breath. I was a swimmer one time. <laughs> you breathe like a swimmer. Yeah, you know, you go under, you, you know? Get your breath, breath and do it. Duke leading by six. But you six. went high-low. That's the purpose of the whole thing. I didn't want anybody to miss a pause on a high-low situation. You got it right now if you want it. Adams from the outside. No. Both teams have the majority of their points in the paint so far. Duke with a 14-8 to eight edge in that department. And Duke on the season has outscored their opponents by a plus three points in the paint. So, you know, this is where they're having to go a lot more offensively. Wake Forest not been successful really a lot this year. Three-point baskets continue to pound it. Right now, this game is for the taking. Either team get an explosion in this final four minutes. Connie, difficult shot. Battle for the board. Out of bounds off of Odom. Wake ball. Four oh four to play here in the second quarter. Connie, nice pass to Ratza. Very unselfish play that time by Conti, and Ratza does a great job getting inside position and going to the basketball and finishing. Nice play there. 
That's the third assist of the half for Connie, who averages five assists per game, second in the league. There's your high-low situation. Ball's in the middle of the floor. This time they crossed on the wings, and he gives Odom a jumper. Rebound, Dixon. Wake now with a 20, a 13 edge on the glass. But the Deeks have turned it over 10 times compared to Duke's four. Did you, that was great. We'll, we'll talk about this in a minute. I want to show you the athleticism of Odom. Just marvel at watching her play. Jarosinski feeds Ratza inside. Lindsay's like, I'm too close to the basket. I'm not going to shoot this one. Conti flips it up, draws the foul, and free throws are coming. Jade Williams picks up the foul for Duke. Connie has made two-thirds of her free throws this year, just about. Like our sideline reporter, Haley Brook. Gina was a volleyball player growing up. She was an all-conference volleyball player in high school. Comes from a very athletic family. And I tell you what, if anybody has, has really upped their game this season, it's Gina Conte. She's had no choice. Yeah, I mean, which exactly. And that's what that's why sometimes having to be forced into play makes you better. You know, we found out here again. And what I like about her is her toughness. And she just she plays, you know, almost the entire 40 minutes. She's involved in the ball game defensively as well as offensively. The Blue Devils are now 0 for 5 with four turnovers in their last nine trips down the floor. They haven't scored in nearly six minutes. We talk about Wake Forest and their ability to turn the basketball over. Duke is number 10 in the conference, a minus 1-6 as far as the turnover margin goes. That's a travel. Sure was. Wake unable to take advantage of Alex Sharp's fine offensive rebound. So Duke maintains a three-point lead with the ball. If you're Duke, what you want to continue to do is just pound the basketball and try to find those gaps and let, to get a jump shot. For, oh, there's a lot. Easy two there for Liana Odom, her second bucket. How many times do you see a lob like that? Oh, hangs in the air. Odom's got the length to go up, get it, take her time, and score. Ratza, Dixon, Connie, Jarosinski, and Sharp for Wake Forest with 10 to shoot. I think this is a huge possession for Wake Forest. Connie cutting to the gap in the zone, missed it, but Ratza on the glass is there. Third effort from the Deeks draws the foul, and Ratza beside herself <laughs> for not converting inside. Duke does not do a great job in boxing out, and this is a team that's a fairly good rebounding team as well. But uh, you know, get caught on the weak side, and, and Ronson's determination to make sure she gets the basket. The first time didn't work, second time didn't work, maybe the third one will. Ivana Ratza hails from Serbia. Wake Forest with players from six different countries. Assuming you include the United States, you got Hanna from Sweden. You got Christina Mora from Canada, obviously Penna from Italy. Alex. Alex Sharp, obviously, from Australia. Unfortunately for the Deeks, you know, the 12-person roster that they have, they were all healthy from the start of the season to now. You could figure them being, but seven of the 12 have missed time with injury and illness and you told me before the game that you only need five but the reality is in, in the acc you need more than five well you didn't say where you just said you know, i just told you you know i mean you need it you didn't say. but yeah it has been i mean it's been a crazy season for for both teams and it really has and when you look at that look at the fact that you know ariel hasn't played at all this year when you started the season pinna was was injured and, and so was alex and so it's just been it's just been crazy 
And Ana Uda has missed, this is her third ball game. She will have missed due to an ankle injury, I think it is. So. Dixon rejected and tied up. It'll be Duke ball. Dixon misses two out of the last three with a, with a, with a possible concussion. It's just, yeah, it happens. But here's the thing about it. You got another day, you got another game, and so you go out there and do the best you can with what you have, and you try to figure out a way to win. They're keeping scores, so let's play. And in terms of figuring out a way to win and persevering through injuries, don't forget, the Notre Dame Fighting Irish, one of the most injured teams in the country last year, did not stop Moffat McGraw and Arike Agumawale and Jess Shepard from a magical national championship. That is an excellent point. Good for one again. Here's Rotsa the steal. And the foul. So Wake kept trailing by as many as 10, a chance to get back within two. Final 30 seconds of this first half. Nice job by Ivana getting the passing lane here. Anticipates, gets there. Roma does a nice job running her down, tries to get the contact. You want to make, if you want to create that foul, you want to try to do it before they can get the ball in the air because you don't want to give the possible three point play. She knocked her off just enough that she didn't, and <laughs> Called the foul on Roma. You gonna watch the Oscars tonight? Roma is one of the best picture nominees. Didn't see it, probably won't. <laughs> I have not seen it yet either, but. Every movie on the list of Oscar possible winners, I don't think I've seen. Just been, it's the season, you know how it is. You can't watch them. You can't. You got time to go sit and watch a movie for two hours. That's usually true. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'll see it this summer or next summer, baby. I, I, it won't happen anytime soon, I can tell you that. Ten seconds in the half after Rotz had missed a couple of free throws. Good child, big shot. Just a little bit of airspace is all she needs. From midcourt, Dixon. And Wake had a chance to get back within two. Instead, they missed two free throws. Good child makes the three. And the Blue Devils take a seven-point lead into the locker room. The freshman from Queensland, from downtown, Purdue. Pleasant Sunday afternoon on the Wake Forest quad. Don't forget, coming up in August, the debut of the ACC Network. 15 schools on one network. Go to getaccn.com. This music might make you think we got an NBA game for you. We do not. But we have ACC standings for you. Women's basketball season ends a week from today. The tournament in Greensboro begins in a week and a half. Scores from around the league. A couple of ranked teams going at it. Miami clinging to a seven-point lead. Good ball game, NC State and North Carolina headed down to the wire. Remember the Tar Heels hand to the Wolfpack their first loss of the year in the past month. Hokies and Tigers in a 10 point game. Georgia Tech trying to get a road win up in Charlottesville. This is as wide open as an ACC women's race stand as I think we've seen since Notre Dame entered the league. Yeah, Notre Dame's been so dominant as of late. And you were talking earlier about the Duke run. One of the reasons that run went away was because of the dominance of Notre Dame. Notre Dame, Louisville, Miami, their NC State. Uh, the numbers, they're kind of like these teams. They don't have a lot of bodies, so it, it wears on you. Remember, we talked about the toughness of their schedule in February. Very, very interesting. Georgia Tech is a team that, that really impressed me late in the season. That They've continued to play well. The Heels had a big win against NC State. They're hanging in there today, so we'll see. But yeah, Notre Dame, Louisville, Miami, it's going to be close to final week of the season in the ACC and the ACC tournament in On Greensboro. Thursday evening here in Winston-Salem, the two teams at the bottom of the league, Wake and Pittsburgh, will battle to avoid seller status. Wow. That's Thursday night. That's Thursday. Notre Dame and Louisville, both with two losses, Miami, Dropped uh, its third game of the year. Fallen to Virginia Tech this past Thursday night. Gymnastics display on the court at the Joel at halftime. 25-18, Duke by seven.
Welcome back to the Joel Coliseum. We're at the half with Duke leading Wake Forest 25 to 18. And the Blue Devils, two of seven from beyond the arc. Mila Goodchild needs to shoot more. She's two of two today from beyond the arc. Nine of 14 in her last four quarters, coming going off the 21 point second half she had at Notre Dame. She's really taking a step forward for the Blue Devils to, to put them in a position to win. Oh, no question. And when you see the zone, her eyes light up, but this time it's in transition. And using her left hand, she's, she's going to be a really good player. She's got the game. Inside, there's the outside, the dribble pin, kick it. Watch this little crossover right there. Gives her some airspace, and bam, she knocks it down. Two or three from three-point landing for Wake Forest. Roxas had some opportunities and some good looks. Three of ten shooting. There's a little high-low we talked about earlier. She catches the ball in there and is able to finish this time a power move. Uses the left, protects herself with the basketball. Drive by Conti, another assist. Come back to the basketball, able to catch it and finish it in the same motion. Wake Forest needs more of that. Duke needs more of Godchild. Efficiency is the, the mere difference between these two players. One's three for three, the other's three for ten. Exactly, but both of them are going to have to be volume shooters in the second half, I think, for either team to win. Deacons is a team, shoot 25%, 7 of 28. Blue Devils, 36%, 10 of 28. Anybody's game, Duke was in front by seven at the end of one. Teams each scored eight points apiece. And the thing that concerns me, quarter. if you would, the turnovers, Duke to six and Wake at 11, and also Duke doing what they've done most of the season, winning the points in the paint. Well, Wake's winning the rebounds, but Duke is winning the turnover battle. A few minutes away from the start of the second half in this 85th ever meeting between Duke and Wake Forest here at the Joel Coliseum. Across the street from the Joel Coliseum, you're looking at live action from David F. Couch Ballpark, home of the Demon Deacons. They're taking on the Quinnipiac Bobcats right now. And the Deacons have a 10-0 lead in the bottom of the fourth inning. Wake has nine hits so far, one apiece for every player in the lineup today. 10-zip, a five-run first and a five-run second for Coach Tom Walter's team as the Deeks try to bounce back from a loss to the Bobcats yesterday. It looks like they're bouncing back fairly nicely. Very good to bounce back. Get you're, away base, day. you're a baseball guy, Stan? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Love baseball. You know, you know, everybody always talks about the love of late September and October because you've got football, basketball starting, baseball playoffs, a lot of things going on, hockey starting. But I'll tell you what, February sneaks up on you in March because you got basketball season, the playoffs and whatnot, start NCAAs, baseball's getting started, you know, golf right around the corner, the Masters, <laughs> baseball season, it's a lot of things. This is a good time of the year. A lot of things going on in Wake Forest. Continued success to the baseball team and all the teams. Duke had a great baseball run last year, too. Sure did. Already started the third quarter. With Duke ahead by seven. Good child, the leading scorer with eight. Jade Williams has six. Haley Gorecki with five. Wake Forest side of things. Rotzer with seven. Jarosinski, the second leading scorer with five points. And a three-point basket. Buzzer beater to close the first period. Wake hasn't shot many threes so far in this game. The Deeks are just two for four from beyond the arc. Not willing to settle. Wake 13th in the conference on only 111 three-point baskets made. But right now, we're going to find out in the first four minutes, Evan, which team wants this basketball game. Not only do you want it, but do you believe you can win it. If you can go out and be aggressive on offense and defense, make some plays, make some shots, this game is, is yours if you want to. So we'll find out a lot right now. Certainly a very different story than Wake Forest first half on Thursday when they were down 20 at the end of the first quarter and 27 at the break. That's a mental error as a three-second call on Banks. Had that right foot still in the lane, never got out as the ball moved. And that's just, just, just a mental error. And you've got to lock yourself into what you're doing on the court. And 
to see if Duke will take advantage of it. Good child feeds it inside. Akinbadi James picked up her second foul. Was on the bench at the end of the half. Pretty good move there. Everything but the bucket. And her second effort Ooh. is blocked. But they got Banks for the foul. Her second. Good body. James had a nice little head and shoulder there. Used the ball. Gets around. Gets good position. I think you're saying Banks got it with the body. Anime Akinbadi James said she was focused on education most of her childhood. Didn't really play a sport. But then because she was as tall as she ended up being, everyone was like, you should do something with your height. Yeah. Don't you just hate that? I mean, you know, some of us are going to be brain surgeons and stuff. And then, you know, you got you got bigger than everybody else. And so you took on another career path. Didn't you hate that? There's an inconsistency there. But she also gets a nice scholarship to Duke University, which could help prepare her to do whatever she wants to do down the road. Amen to that. Straight away three, Ratsa is good. Good look. Again, move the basketball from side to side, inside out, and shooters be ready to shoot when the ball is reversed. Point blank, knocks it down. Wake now three for five beyond the arc. Good child, not this time. Conti brings it back out. Squeeze the pass through, it finds Hana. Now Conti resets again. Ball has bounced some funny ways today. Sharp can't convert near Duke. Strong take, Hawking Potty James. We talked about Odom in the first half, running the floor and getting an opportunity for a layup. Hawking Potty James does the same thing. In the paint on one end, is able to finish on the other side. Good hustle. Each of these teams have two games remaining after today in the regular season. Duke has a couple at home, Clemson and Carolina. Wake has Pittsburgh on Thursday and then at Virginia Tech next Saturday. Hanna doesn't take too many shots. Karasinski lost it. Second chance opportunity. you got to finish that. Watch the weak side come over there. Ricky gets her hands on it. It's a good block. Then you get the poke out there, I think, by Rotso. Blue ball. Eighth block of the year for Haley Gorecki. The guard, but you mentioned before, Stan, she does have good size at six feet. Gorecki spinning into the trees, draws contact. Of course, this Duke team has had so many injuries. Gorecki knows what it was like. Played her first 14 games as a freshman. Suffered a hip injury that cost her the 16-17 season that she came back last year suffered an injury to her other hip offensive rebound leads to another foul the type of thing that wake just cannot afford to give duke an extra chance in a game that is competitive exactly i mean exactly well and akambani james just does a great job of kind of Getting Jorzinski out of the way and just gets to a second chance rebound. Ball goes up. Williams will go to the free throw line. And you, you're getting opportunities if you take advantage of them either way. Duke right now not able to score the basketball from the fields going to the free throw line now. We're getting second chance. Williams finally converts Blue Devils one of four from the free throw line on that trip down the floor. And now you get a chance to set your pressure up a little one, two, one, 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 two, two, depending on where that person drops pressure. And Duke will drop back into some type of zone. It's a one, two, two right now. You don't match up out of that, but you've got length across the top, which makes it very hard for you as an offensive player to try to find your angles or shoot or pass. Shot clock at five on the runner, Hanna. On the glass, it's Ratza. Good job on the weak side by Ratza. Stays there and is able to finish. 
12 points now for Ratza. Second straight game in double figures after she had scored single digits the two previous games. Good Bang. child buries another three it for the Blue Devils. Long. Does not take her long to wind up and knock it down. And the Blue Devils have extended their lead back to 10, matching their largest of the game. They led by 10 at 17 to 7 before Jarosinski's three at the end of the first quarter. And it's 17-10. Nice Speaking move. of, Jarosinski on the block. That was a really nice move. She felt contact low. You face up a little drop move, and you're able to score. I like that. Jarosinski, the Illinois native, is one shy of her career high. Scored eight last week against Syracuse. Three of five from the floor, seven points, four rebounds so far today. Gorecki. Good idea. The pass a little too high, though, for Williams. <laughs> nice pass. Jarosinski has a new career best. Great penetration that time by Conti. Three Blue Devil defenders come up and attack the basketball. Jarosinski's there for the drop off in the layup. Fifth assist of the game for Gina Conti as Gorecki fires. Offensive rebound, Williams goes back up, missed it, and Ratza clears it away, and then waves <laughs> Williams away. Get away. How dare you reach in in the backcourt. Duke's got to tighten up their defense, especially inside the three-point arc. Midway through the third, Conti will get to the line. And we'll get ourselves a timeout, but Gina Conti with her passing, keeping the Deeks in it. She's only got one point, but she's got a chance for two more coming up at the line. Try to get the Deeks within four. We get a six-point game midway through the third. The big J goes inside. Lindsay goes in, scores. Grants the ball, finishes high. Watch this. Just before the end of the quarter, steps up, knocks in her first three-pointer, and now goes in and scores a drop step move and score. And this is a perfect pass. Gina Conti, Lindsey Jarosinski, you're going to call these names for a couple more years. It's young going young, and the big lady inside scoring. Got a career best 10 points and also made her first ever, ever three-point basket. Isn't that a historic day, don't you think? It is absolutely an epic performance. And Considering that she had scored 12 points in Wake's first 24 games of the year, and is it 19 points in the past week? Like what she's doing. Again, you know, you don't like maybe the results, you don't like the record, but you can see the, the promise. I'd, I'd rather be a player that now, as a, as a freshman, I'm getting some minutes. I'm finding out what college life, college basketball life is about. And so over the summer, now you work to improve, as opposed to someone that maybe sat, watched a lot, and then you've got to kind of guess. Well, she knows now what she's got to do, and you're seeing some of that hard work begin to pay off. Back in zone for Wake Forest after they made free throws, how will Duke handle it? You've got shooters on the court. Connie makes one of two, and the Deeks within five on a 5 nothing run. Jada Adams, not really a big, long-range three-point shooter. He's made 16 on the season. He would rather have him shoot it than here. Good child. Can't connect. Jarosinski with her fifth rebound. Inside. Sharp can't finish, but Ratza sneaks in again. Tie-up's going to give it back to Duke, though. Seven rebounds for Ratza. Unable to get it back up on the rim, though. Wake hanging around despite the fact that Duke jumped up 8 nothing and has led wire to wire here today. Ricky's back in the ball game. They're going to move her to the, to the two. Adams will play the point for a couple possessions. And another turnover. Ricky, 
Looking inside, deflected and stolen. Jade Williams, some fantastic anticipation right there from the sophomore. Pass to the middle, deflected. Conti emerges for the steal. Wake going downhill, kicks it. Dixon! And Williams, another board for the Blue Devils, her sixth. A lot of action. Duke says, let's slow things down. You've got two shooters on the wing. They're going to try to run, run a little set here and try to see if he can reverse the ball and get a good look for good child or Gorecki. Good closeout by Dixon. Yeah. And now Williams with two on the shot clock. Not going to get a shot off because a three-second violation nullifies the Williams drive. Ellen Hanna's back in. Ratza will get a breather. Faith Suggs returns for Duke. Maybe a little quicker lineup on the court for Duke right now. Try to extend this pressure, maybe get a couple turnovers, some fast break layups. Wake's got to handle the trap. Wake knows it's coming because yeah. they know that in every other team's scouting report, they've seen film of Wake turning the ball over against full court pressure from well, November to December to January to February. And March if you're playing. And that was a great example there. And Gricky does a great job of turning the defender to the sideline. And Conti tried to power our way through and bumped off Trout, and you get another turnover. Blue Devils scoring drought nearing four minutes. Going to be Duke Ball. Alex Sharp said <laughs> that it was off Duke. Angel Stanton on the baseline disagreed. Offensive foul, though. They got it on Adams. There's a win to be had here for two teams that have struggled to find wins in the ACC this season. That's great passing. Banks inside brings the Deeks within three. If they're going to see the pressure there, you, you flash to the middle of the court and get it and quickly try to go down the side of the reverse, you're going to get a basket. Good job that time attacking the pressure by Wake Forest and the timeout by Duke. Take a look again, if you will, and you're just going to see moving the basketball versus pressure. Right there, there's the drive. Another little drop-down pass. Banks with the catch. Con 2.28 to play here in the third quarter. Deacons on a 7-0 rally to inch within three. As you see the score by quarter, Duke is led by as many as 10, both in the first quarter and here in the third quarter, but Wake continues to hang around. Joanne P. McCauley took the time out. She's 19-2 in her career against the Deeks. See the leading scorers today. Good child with 11 and Ratza, the game's high scorer with a dozen. Both of those players are explosive enough and can score different ways. Ratza's more of an inside player, mid-post player. Good child can knock down threes as we've already seen in this game. Which one of those players or someone else can take over the final few minutes of this ball? Gorecki gets in the paint. Kicks it out for good child. Wake Forest has a chance to tie the game with a three. Looking inside, Sharp. Let's the defenders go by and then miss the layup. And the foul called on Sharp in the aftermath. Good idea to push the pace after the long rebound. But you must, you must finish that play. And no one knows that any better than Alex Sharp right now. Good to see her back on the court. She'll make up for that missed layup the next time she's on the court. I can almost assure you. See Duke go for its last six. Run a little set play here. Four turnovers as well. They're scoreless in the last five minutes or so. And they break the drought inside with Williams. They took away the wing jump shots from Good Child, and so you go inside, and Williams with a very strong move to score. Inside the banks. 
Nice That's move. Nice. That's a nice move. Big time. Wake has these young players where they show you these glimpses. They make these spectacular looking plays. And like, where has that been all game? All, yeah. all year. Three for Williams there. That's her second three of the season. Yeah, what's in the water today? Williams making her second three. Jarosinski made her first. Her the first? end of the first. Double figures for Jade for the ninth time this year. Back inside oh, the nice fence. move again, Maya. Great position. She converts. After nobody could score, it's back and forth buckets. Offensive foul, the call on Gorecki. Our first personal. Dalton may have got him for a trap as opposed to the offensive foul. Again, trying to push the pace. Let's talk about it here. There's a drive, one, two. Yeah, maybe maybe the NBA play there, but a good defensive play by Maya Banks to take the offensive foul. And you're right, back and forth action. So, then do you go back into your high-low set? Do you go back inside the Banks? Or do you try to score on the perimeter? I think you try to go a little bit of both. You, know, you look inside, you look inside strong, and then if you don't get it, you go outside. One of the age-old questions, to be or not to be. <laughs> Beeks turn it over. <laughs> you just want me to be your setup guy, don't you? This is like, I just, you know, you set him up and you know, knock him down and everything. It's just like, all I did is throw up a question. What do you want to do? Throw a little Shakespeare. What do you got for me next? When you got Wake and Duke, you got to oh, yeah, okay. bring you intellectual up your game. You're exactly right. Good child we step back. That. That's the end of the third quarter. Wake wins that third period, 16 to 13. And we go to the fourth in a four-point game. Duke 38, Wake 34. About to take a turn for home into the fourth quarter we go at the Joel Coliseum on this final Sunday in February. March is just five days away. The madness is almost here. The fourth quarter, though, immediately upon us with Duke leading 38-34. Let's send it down to the sideline with Haley Brooks. Thanks, guys. Coach Joanne McCauley for Duke has had a successful tenure here. Aside from being three-time ACC Coach of the Year, she has also, out of her 11 years at Duke, led the team to 10 NCAA tournament appearances, including an impressive Sweet 16 run last year. It would be difficult for them to make the NCAA tournament this year, but McCauley is focusing just one game at a time. Back to you guys. Yeah, they'd have to make a run and win the ACC tournament to have a, a chance. If they obviously they win the tournament, they get into the dance. That is their chance in Greensboro in a couple weeks. Wake begins the fourth quarter with Banks inside. Duke ball. It's the great thing about March. You want to play well right now, get some momentum. And you never know. Just win one game and then try to win the next game. You lay it all out on the line. But this ACC has been so competitive. you got a lot of work to do if you want to cut down the nets. By the way, NC State did prevail over Carolina. There's a great and one opportunity for Aname Akinbadi James. Great move is here. Watch this. A little contact there. Akambadi James, again, we talk about her just really new to the game, but you know, she's had a couple of double-figure ball games. Had 14 early against Wisconsin in the game against Virginia a few weeks ago. Had 10. Was able to go up there and make her free throw, only a 54% free throw shooter, and it gives Duke a little wiggle room there, and they can put the pressure on Wake Forest after the made free throw. Sharp to Banks for two. And that, my friends, is a way to beat the press. Ball never touched the floor. That's eight points for Maya Banks. She's one shy of her career high. Shot clock down to 10. 
to the corner. Williams fakes it, steps in, high off the backboard, and way off. Gina Connie, seven assists already, pulls up this time. Rebound sharp, unable to stick it back in. And Ockenbody James has the rebound. Good opportunity there for Wake Forest to close this lead. Tough shooting day for Alex Sharp. She's one of nine. Some good looks. Even though she's had success for two games, she's returned 17 and 10 points respectively. Steele trying to get your conditioning, get your timing. Been away from the game for a few weeks. That ball unable to be saved by Adams. Watch this. Ball there in the middle of the floor. There's a pass, a cross-court pass, an extra pass, very unselfish pass at time by Sharp. And Maya Banks, hands are ready, keeps the ball up strong and is able to finish. Looked like a basketball instructional video right there. Yeah, it was, it that's, the that's one we've got. You know, like, keep that in the truck. Keep that. That's part of the reel. Teaching purposes. As the shot went up, you heard the whistle, and it's for an offensive foul on Alex Sharp. They called it on Jarosinski, actually, her second. Good for the Deeks, because it would have been Sharp's fourth. Sharp and Banks each have three. No one else in the game has more than two. With the success that she's had in the last couple possessions, as Jen takes her takes Banks out for a few minutes, not wanting her to pick up the fourth foul, get ready for the stretch run, get a layup inside. And Odom now with six points. Looks done a better job on her today than they did a month ago. It's Connie delivers her first field goal. Mismatch in size there, but Conti not afraid, goes over to taller Odom and knocks down the basket. Perimeter passing now. Getting a touch for Rock and Body James. Gorecki into the paint. Lost it. Oh, great recovery in Dish. And Williams lays it in. Just continuing to make a play. Dive after a loose ball. Good, you know, and that was Gorecki. I'm sorry about to say Gorecki. This makes a nice play. Keeps the ball alive. And Williams is there to score. Conti rejected. Rock and Body James emerges. Tough one that time for Conti. Good defense by Duke. Six forty-five to play, fourth quarter. Duke trying to win for the fiftieth time in their last fifty-one meetings against Wake Forest. Good block there, Jarosinski. She has really she had five blocks against State. She's really become a dominant force inside, a confident force, I should say, inside. Rotson missed the three at one end. Good child inside the arc at the other. And Duke slows it down. If you're Duke, you take your time. You've had some success going inside. You know you've got perimeter shooters are going to try to run a little ball screen action away. Gorecki. Yes. She's good. <laughs> She's good. She had been just one of 11 before that make. But it gives Duke a nine-point lead. Came off the screen from Godchild, and then you get the second person in, puts it on the floor, is able to score. It was a huge basket for Duke right now. It gives him a little more momentum, a little more space. Ratza doubled. Garasinski steps through, puts it in. Jen Hoover takes a timeout to give her team some rest with 5.34 to go. Deacons hanging around. Haley Gorecki leading her Blue Devils on the road, trying to steal their fourth win of the season in the ACC. Blue Devils in front. Big day for Jade Williams. 6'5", sophomore from Texas, goes in, puts it on the floor. You love the versatility in their game. Catches it with the left hand, keeps it up, score. Got a little drop step there, get away from me, score. Spread the defense, can step out, knocks in her second three of the season, and then the great hustle play keeps the ball alive. And Jade's able to score one more time and has been one of the primary offensive threats in this basketball game, especially in the second half for the Blue Devils. 
Coming off a 10-point game at Notre Dame after only scoring seven points in her three previous games since she had a really strong performance, 15 points, eight rebounds against Pittsburgh. Duke by seven with the ball. We close in on five minutes to go. Williams knew she missed it as soon as it left her hand, and it's out of bounds off Duke. Wake's not out of it, not by a long shot. They haven't been able to get over the hurdle. They've been within single digits most of the game, but have never led, not for a single second. Conti, Dixon, Ratza, Sharp, and Banks. And Elisa Penner remains out. Ana Udo is out. Reagan Branch is out. Deep three, Ratza. Rebound for Rock and Body James. Now Odom able to bleed some clock. Odom's played more point guard for the Blue Devils since Michaela Boykin went down. Here's good child for three. Yes! She's done a really good job of it, especially knowing the fact that you've got wing shooters. It's opened up the fact that you can get wing shooters. Good child just gets another great look. He's able to knock that down and extend his lead to 10. So my question there is, and as an offensive foul, I think, three-second call, is going to be, will Wake Forest be able to have not enough defense, Evan, but offensively, do they have enough firepower right now to cut into this 10-point lead in Kettle W? Wake scored 10 points in the first quarter, eight points in the second quarter, then erupted for 16 in the third, but this is certainly not an offensively gifted team right now. You're averaging 57 points last offensively in the ACC. Points and possessions are important. Deficit could have grown, but Odom shot rimmed out. Here's Connie. Sharp feeding Ratza inside. All game long, that has been the Deeks game plan. Get it to Ratza on the block. Yeah. And they did a nice job that time in getting the ball from the strong side of the floor back to the weak, back to strong. And you just, you've got to be able to finish those plays. Ratza had a good look. Post positioning. Duke will take their time. Another rebound for Sharp. That's her 11th board. Connie zips it inside. Hana. Sharp, yes. Nice pass, better catch and score. Second field goal for Sharp. Four points, 10 rebounds for her. Good assist from Hanna. Wake with an eight, Sharp. three minutes to go. Sharp just continues to just make smart plays and you just wonder what would have happened had she been able to play most of this season. A pinner been able to play most of the season. Shot clock at six. Recognize. Good child inside. Williams. That might be the ball game. Evan just understanding the clock situation. Good child never stopped. Even though this ball bobbles right there, she's still in control, makes a nice play. And Jade Williams, we talked about her just a few moments ago, having a timely scoring opportunity in the second half, comes up with an opportunity to score one more time. And, and, and I, what 14, 16, she makes this, she ties her season high with 17. Heck of a pass from Good Child. And Williams it? matches her career high, 17 points for the third time in her Duke career. Largest lead of the game now, it's 11. And Wake turns it over for the 19th time. Can't pick the basketball up at half court. It becomes another defender, and its own its own trap just squeezes you a little bit. Got to keep the ball moving. Remember what they did early. You got to look at that video again. <laughs> now Duke will just take your time, swing the ball high low. Look for look for matchups right now. Odom being guarded by Conti. It'll be Wake ball. They got a foul on Duke. on Odom. Blue Devils with Clemson and North Carolina remaining on the schedule before the ACC tournament. Leona Odom entered the day 
67 points away from 1,000 in her career. She's now 61 points away. It'll be tough for her to get there before the end of the year unless she really picks it up. Now, she is just a junior. So she's got a whole extra year to become the 34th Blue Devil all time with 1,000. And she's a select score. I mean, she, you know, there are games where she can explode and, and you know, Carolina win a couple of weeks ago at 21. And then there are games where she just really doesn't look to score. That's a good look. Another foul on Duke. Just the second team foul, though. So Wake will have it. Minute and a half to go. Wake, 0 for February so far. One final chance in this month on Thursday night against the cellar dwelling Pitt Panthers. Banker in for Conti. So Gina's got six to go along with seven assists. Yeah, I, I, before this is over, got to give a lot of credit to both of these staffs. That they're they're under man, under woman, and they they've been able to manipulate substitutions, timeouts, and keep people on the floor that are able to produce. I mean, even even in a possible loss for Wake Forest, you've got people out there that are trying to make some plays. There's the fourth foul against so sharp, and so it's it's been a task on both coaching staffs this year. I tell you that. It is hard when you're undermanned in a competitive league like this. Fourth foul on Sharp. And Ratza fouls Williams with 56.5. It's still a nine-point game. If Duke missed a couple free throws, you go down and hit a quick three, all of a sudden, you never know. Yeah, and you got to keep in mind, Duke is a 65% free throw shooting team on the season. That's a great point. So there's some opportunities there if you'll take them. You missed this second shot, missed the first one, you're able to convert, transition, use a timeout, stretch the game. Williams obliges with the miss. Williams shoots 62% on the season. Missed them both. There you go. Timeout, Jen Hoover. 55.7 remaining. You can advance the ball now in the final minutes of the ball game. So again, Jen Hoover pitched in there in the game plan. Keep your minds open. Score, cut the lead, file again. In your mind, do you look for a three here in the mindset of a three possession game or do you just try to get a quick layup? No, nah, I, I look for the best shot. Like you said, you look, you look for the best available shot with a person that you know can make either the inside or the outside shot. What happens a lot of times is you find yourself down six, eight, nine, ten, like that, a possession or two. You take the quick three, you miss it. The other team goes to the free throw line or gets the basket. And what could have been a six or seven point game becomes a ten or eleven point game. And you really take yourself out of it because you're not going to have enough possessions. So get me something quick. Use your timeouts. Use your foul situation, and uh, and then make Duke beat you at the free throw line. Blue Devils 5 of 10 from the line in the second half. The thing I would be cautious of about Wake Forest and be alert is that in this defensive formation Duke's in, this is, they're vulnerable for a trap right now because you got Odom at the top. See if they try to trap the basketball. Ratza for three. Rebound, Gorecki. And a timeout taken by Joanne P. McCauley. Blue Devils will advance the basketball. Duke's three ACC wins this year, Stan, have all come by double figures. And seven of their 10 ACC losses have come by single digits. You think about a six point loss to Georgia Tech, the loss to Miami by eight, Florida State by four, double overtime, BC game, two point loss, six points at UVA, seven against Virginia Tech. This Duke team is not far away from, say, being seven and six yeah. instead of three and they ten. They played 12 games, 10 points or less, as they did to fact, your point, and they're at three and nine. So they've been in basketball games and, and not been able to convert. 
you hope if you're Duke right now, you're able to make those free throws, be strong with the basketball, you're able to advance it. So you've got you've got time and, and, and ball in your possession, in your favor. Got to get it in. Akin body James, not the free throw shooter that Coach P would have wanted to get the ball to in an ideal situation. Although she is three for three today. Yeah, but on, on the season, I think she's like 55%. So you, you try to play your averages right now. If, if you're Wake Forest, quick foul by Maya Banks. You understand the same scenario you had a moment ago. No longer have one and one in women's basketball, Kaylin Dixon. She was ready to pounce. <laughs> She's ready to pounce to get the box out. Okay, now, you, you run your quick break. If she makes it, you get it in and you push it. If you miss it, you get the box out, rebound, and you go. There you go. Four straight missed free throws from Duke. And the Deacons capitalize. Can't foul if you're Duke. Great block. <laughs> Conti swatted away <laughs> by Akinbody James. Driving inside. Think you got a layup. Akinbody James, 6-3, comes out of no place with the block. Take that back home with you. Alex Sharp thought she was fouled. No whistle. Dixon gives the foul on Gorecki. 36 seconds remaining. I think Sharp had a case. Think so? Here. I do. From that angle, it looked like she may have gotten ball. Maybe, you know. But if you think so. And, I don't and, and, think it would have made too much yeah, of a difference yeah, for the outcome no, of the game. No, but, yeah, yeah. But you if you know. think so, and, and more importantly, if Alex thought she was fouled, then I'm going to go with it. Two for two at the line for Gorecki. And another timeout with 36 seconds remaining. Duke by 11. Joanne P. McCauley, 36 seconds away from her 625th victory. Eight years the head coach at the University of Maine, seven years at Michigan State, took the Spartans to the national final, and now in her 12th year leading the Blue Devils. Good friend of mine, Anne Marie Gilbert, which is up in Richmond at Virginia Union, was on her staff at Michigan State and they're having success. And, and speaks high praises of how she was able to kind of mold that Michigan State program. Don't forget, starting on the 6th of March in Greensboro, the Coliseum, the ACC Women's Basketball Tournament is back. Looking forward to that event. You got a wide open race at the top. Notre Dame and Louisville have been the powers in the league. They each have two losses this year. And you got Miami and NC State right behind them. Carolina and Clemson have shown they can knock off teams. Florida State, always dangerous come tournament time. Don't forget about the heels. I mentioned Carolina. Did you? I wasn't listening. That's usual. <laughs> I wasn't listening to <laughs> The thing about the teams that don't have a lot of depth, the teams that have injuries, is being able to play two, three, four games possibly back to back to back, and it wears on you. So you, you think about the Notre Dames and the Florida States and the Louisville's teams that got some depth, can make some plays in Miami. Well, Wake foul again. No. You're right. Good child just takes it away, and she will dribble out the final seconds, presumably. Jen Hoover says no fouls, and the final score is going to be Duke 55, Wake 54. Blue Devils sweep the season series over the Deacons as the Duke Deacon domination for the past 25 years continues today. Well, there were opportunities for Wake Forest and certainly for Duke, and Duke took advantage of it, being able to score. Give a lot of credit to Jade Williams. Her second half efforts kind of propelled the, you know, uh, Duke to this win. Solid game, solid win for the Blue Devils. Duke snaps its three-game losing streak. The Blue Devils are 4-10 and 
in the ACC, 12 and 14 overall. The Deacons slip to.